Let's say we have some polygon here. This polygon is a little bit special. This polygon is a convex polygon. Now, if you don't know what a convex polygon is, I recommend that you look at some of our older videos, but from now on, I'm going to be assuming that you know what a convex and a concave polygon is, uh, so we can continue. So with this convex polygon, it, it has some number of sides of some lengths. They don't, it doesn't necessarily need to be regular. But what we want to know is the sum of all of the interior angles of this polygon, whatever polygon it may be. I'm doing the ring style. Might not have been a good idea. Uh, six rings, three, four, five, six. We're just putting a different number of rings on for the different angles. We want to find out what, let's call this angle A, B, C, D, E, and F. A lot of times we use Greek letters, but for now we'll just use this, this alphabet here. We want to know what A plus B plus C plus D plus E plus F is. And that could be plus all the way on to whatever number we have. I don't know, plus, you know, the letter, uh, what's our mystery letter? Whatever. Whatever letter we go to. You know, we could go A2, A, B2, just whatever we end at. It doesn't matter how many sides we have, we just, this is just the example I'm using. I'm using a hexagon here, an irregular hexagon, uh, but we could have any number of sides we want, as long as we have sides n, I'm going to call it. Or I should probably do that in a different color, do that in red. n sides for the sides here. So how can we approach this problem? Well. Is there any type of shape that we know the sum of the interior angles of? I'll give you a hint. I'm going to draw it. That's right, a triangle. We know that the interior angles of a triangle all sum up to 180 degrees. Right, so we do A, B, and C. We know that A plus B plus C is equal to 180 degrees. Very good. All right, so how, you know, that's a triangle, but we want this to be generalizable for any polygon with n sides. And I, uh, to do that, I want to kind of edit this, uh, this polygon a little bit and see what we can find. All right, so we have our polygon again here, and we want to try to find a way to incorporate triangles into this polygon in some way. Uh, l let's just see what we can do. Well... I'm, I'm just gonna, oops, I'm just gonna try a little thing here. We'll see if it's, we'll see if it works out. How, how can we fit triangles into here? Well, let's just, let's just take one of those vertexes, and if I'll remind you, um, there's an equal number of vertices, oops, as there are sides. There's one vertice for each side in a polygon, right? We have in this example, we have six vertices and six sides. So let's just take one vertice, vertex, not vertice, and let's connect that to all the sides except the ones that it's already connected to. All right. Well, look, we just we just made some triangles in here. Well, that's interesting. But what's even more interesting about the, these triangles is look at their interior angles. Let's highlight those. If we check out this, oops, let's, let's not make a line. If we check out all of these interior angles of all of these triangles here, notice that they all collectively add up to the total interior angles of this polygon. And if you don't believe me, look, this whole angle here, this green angle, is one of the angles that we're trying to find. So is this one, so is this one. This total green one here is the one that we're, is one that we're trying to find. So is this one, and so is this total green one, right? And not every triangle has 
an angle that fits perfectly in those, but all of the triangle's angles are part of one of the poly the greater polygon's angles, and there isn't any part of the angle's polygon angles that is not filled by a triangle angle. So all of the angles of these triangles, in some order, add up to the angles of this polygon. And that's pretty interesting. Like if we just take these triangles and their angle measures, and we just fit them in here, the all of the triangles angle measures are part of one of these big green things. And these big green things are only made of triangle angle measures. And so the triangle angle measures are the parts and those parts add up to a whole. So what we can really do is just add up all of the numbers of those triangles by 180, right? Because each triangle contains 180 degrees and the interior angles of these triangles are adding up to that greater polygon's interior angles. So it should just be however many triangles we have times 180 degrees. Let's write that. So our expected interior angle sum for the polygon, I'm going to call, ooh, what should I call that? Uh, I'll just call that S. That's, yeah, let's just call it S. Angle sum. I'm just going to call it S. I'm going to make this little carrot thing here for the angle. Um, and this is going to be, we think, however many triangles we have, I'm gonna, I'm gonna call that T times 180 degrees because each triangle has 180 degrees. So we're just adding up 180 degrees for each triangle, which is the same as multiplying. So how can we figure out how many triangles there are? And first of all, to do this, I'm going to take a look at some other examples. Let's say, we just, we, we make another polygon, another convex polygon, and we make this one, we make this one have four sides. That seems reasonable enough. Let's try the same thing we did on this one. Oh, we can only connect one that isn't already connected. Oh, look, there's two triangles. That's interesting. Let's try again. Let's make another one. Let's try a pentagon this time. One, two, three, four, five. Let's try a pentagon. Let's choose, I don't know, just, just any of the vertices. Just do that one. Look, what's that? We made three. So we went up by one side and we went up by one triangle, but we're still, how many less? We're still two less. Look at that. With our hexagon, we have four triangles with six sides. With our quadrilateral here, we have two triangles with four sides. Right, let, let's, let's make that clear. Four sides, and then we can write it in red. Uh, two is our T. For here, three is our T with five sides. And you might be starting to notice pattern. Here we have our t is equal to four. Our number of triangles is four. And we have six sides. So it looks a whole lot like the number of triangles we get is two less than the number of sides we have. How can we justify this? How can we justify this pattern? And here, here's a way to think of it uh, that, that's a bit more intuitive, that seems to make sense to me at least, is if we take one of these, if we take one of these polygons, let's just actually uh, go back to this one for a moment. So if we go back to our original hexagon, and we, we go th with the technique of connecting this one vertex here to the other ones, what, what pattern do we see that we can generalize that isn't just us looking at, you know, the different shapes and the different numbers where we can actually say, hey, mathematically, this makes sense. Well, let's see what we're really doing here. If we connect, I, I'm going to do a uh, different vertex this time. Just need to decide which one's best to visualize this. Let's do this one. So what we're doing here is connecting one vertex to all of the other ones. 
the thing is, it's already connected to these two next to it here. And then it itself is it itself. It doesn't need to connect to that. So what we have is the number of sides of the triangle, right? Because the number of sides of the triangle is the same as the number of vertexes. We're connecting to the number of the vertexes, which is the number of sides of the triangle, minus 3, right? Because there's always going to be one here. There's always going to be one here that we don't connect to. There's going to be one here that we don't connect to. And there's going to be one here, because these are the adjacent vertexes, and they're already connected, because they're adjacent, right? That's just a polygon. So it's always, it's always going to be 3 less than the sides of the triangle, the number of these lines that we make. Right? We made three lines with a six-sided triangle. You can see that. It makes some sense, right? Why would we connect it, you know, when we're, when we're doing this, we're not connecting it to these vertexes that we already know because there are already lines there. It's just redundant. So these new lines will be three less than the number of sides, but how do they contribute to the triangles? Well, think, think of this, this polygon here as kind of like, I don't know, like a... Uh, weird cake or something, a cracker or something. What we're doing is we're breaking it in with three slices, right? This is one slice. So this is slice one. This is slice two. And this is slice three. You know, we could be breaking it into more slices. The point is we're breaking it into however many sides it has minus three slices. So we take the number of sides it has n, and we subtract 3, and that's equal to the number of slices we take. And by taking these slices, we're making these triangles. But notice, we made four triangles here, right? If, if you have a block, if you have a block of cheese, and you cut it three times, and, and this is really going deeper into it. If you're already satisfied, you can skip this part, but if we cut three times into this, each, you know, we already have one piece of cheese at the start. Each cut just makes one extra slice, right? The first one cuts it in half, now there are two. The second one cuts one of those, well, not necessarily in half, one of those pieces into two more pieces, so now we have three. And then the last one cuts that one of those last, you know, one of the three pieces at this point into two more, so we have four. So there's always going to be one more slice, well, one more piece than the number of slices we make, right? So this is the number of slices we take, but the number of pieces, the number of triangles, right, t, is going to be equal to the n minus 3 plus that 1, right? Because there's always this piece over here. We take one slice, two slice, three slice, and we have four pieces. So it's actually going to be t is equal to n minus 2, the number of sides minus 2. That's what we found before. So this makes some sense, right? Because if we go back to what we were originally trying to find up here, the total angle sum of the triangles we said was t times 180. Well, what's that going to be equal to? We know t is n minus 2, so the number of sides minus 2 times 180 degrees. And that's going to be the total number of degrees in your polygon. I hope this was a clear explanation. If you have any questions, you're welcome to pose them in the comment se uh, section of this video. Thanks for watching.